Richard Mander with a, a Stafford Gambit question. Uh, so Queen E2 and Stafford. Yeah, Queen E2 is actually like kind of an annoying move. But it, it depends when they play it. If they play it here, you can play um, Bishop C5. I assume you're referring to this position. Um, I showed this maybe once before on stream. There's a funny trap. Because usually white plays queen e2 to push the pawn. And now white's losing after this. And then if the f pawn moves, we have this, this, and then this. So it's a funny trap. But okay, if white plays perfectly, like if white plays queen e2 and then a move like c3, then it is probably objectively just better for white. Not to say that black still can, can fight. Um, you're probably going to have to play bishop b6, allow d4, and then try and poke and prod at the center. So the thing is, like, the combination of queen e2 and c3, it's not, like, so natural. So most players just don't know to do this. Like, it's not developing any of the pieces, but it is kind of building up the annoying center. Um, you can check with the engine. Engine will probably give, like, 1.5 for white. Yeah. Um, so in general, if they play c3 preparing d4, the most flexible move you can play is bishop b6. Um, I'm wondering why computer is giving castling in d3. Why not castling d4? Okay, it's probably just transposes. But this is still playable, and there's still traps that exist here. Like, you're actually threatening to take now. Let's say g3 to develop the bishop. You take and you have rook e1. So white still has to like kind of ride a fine line to, to not fall into any traps. Um, but of course, of course there's other moves. And we can dig into some lines like bishop c5, bishop g5 is natural. Um, but then c5 is interesting. It's it's already getting kind of complicated. Thank you for the Stafford tips. Oh. Oh, thanks, Richard Mander. Maybe also known as Tander. Or Tan Tanner. <laughs> All these different words ending with ER. Like, this position I, I really wouldn't mind. Uh, given that... Like, only two... Only this move and this move leads to some advantage. Like, e5 looks natural here. The problem with e5 is... White's not actually threatening to take because of the e-file. This is a common theme whenever the queen goes to e2, especially blocking the bishop. White's going to be stuck with this setup for, for a while. And while black's already like much better here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people saw the, the Hafu. I still get asked about it, this Hafu-David Pacman game. Um, Hafu played one of the best lines with d3 and she just she like studied the line like maybe 12 hours before she actually played it against david um but played c3 here um and c3 is is probably one of the strongest moves because it it aims for uh, d4 with tempo so the best response is bishop b6 which prevents d4. With d4, then we take the, the pawn. And there's still some potential. I have a lot of challenges here. So we'll do another random sub. Playing PHJ101. Good luck. Ooh, very meme, meme worthy rating. 1777. Uh. I can't resist. What am I studying these days? Um, whatever I'm studying usually takes place on stream. So, yeah, not not too much. Um, at least chess related. Been listening to a lot of podcasts. Recently got an audiobook on meditation. Another one on, on negotiating. So maybe some lesser chess content. Oh, okay. Opponent knows 
knows the Hafu line. I showed this earlier. I showed this as like a good variation for white. So the move to play is bishop b6. Oh, Fowler's. Yeah, I think Fowler's, chal Fowler's challenged and then didn't show up. I could uh, can try and accept you next. Yeah, White's being very safe. So this will be interesting. We'll see. Whoa, is King? Is this a mouse slip? That was a mouse slip. I'll give White the take back. Okay. Haha. <laughs> This looks fun. I actually don't know... So, I usually have this position with the bishop here and the pawn on c2. But this should be good for for black now, especially after bishop takes g4. Did I say negotiation podcast? I meant audiobook. It's called Never Split the Difference. I got like an Audible subscription maybe a couple of years ago. And I keep forgetting to cancel it. And I keep getting credits every month. So I have to continually just get new books. If anyone has audiobook recommendations, please let me know. Let's play H2 first. And then This looks very, very close to winning. All I need to do is checkmate the white king. I think the plan is to do this. Maybe this? We'll see what white does. Also this. Yeah, the problem is white is always having f3. So... It's not completely winning yet. Ooh, but I could take here. Wait a minute. I, I, sh I should really think before I, I start clicking and dragging. So there's, there's a bunch of candidate moves. I could take here, I could play bishop here, I could play bishop here. And they all come with initiative. So if I play bishop g4, there's f3. This move actually looks the most appealing. Even though it forces rook e1, which defends the pawn. I was thinking then queen h7, threatening bishop g2. But then there's queen f3. Oh, there's a funny line. So bishop here, here, here. Queen f3, I play... I don't have bishop g4. But maybe I just castle... And then later f5, and then this. Let's go for that. Yeah, white's never going to be able to take this pawn. Because then the h-file is too dangerous. I see some people recommending books. The Four Agreements. Something about nature. Oh, Nerdiski said he should challenge me. I have to be in like very, very good form to to play Danya. He's so dangerous. Um, it'll happen at some point. Hi. Chessex. Chessex, I'll bring it to you too. For three months. Thanks so much. Welcome back. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. I guess if you're a tier two sub, you can skip the line. Like if you want to challenge me. I know some people, they just, they sub and then they, they like to watch. Wait a minute. Oh, bishop g2 is not a threat. I was thinking it would be a threat, but yeah, not quite. Okay, so let's play f6 and then g5. Like g5, g4 actually looks really nice here. I am open for challenges. People can use the challenge command. You can connect your 
your thing with Lee Chess. Oh, Fallers, yeah. I feel bad, I should give Fallers a game. But we have to get through this game first. Is Fallers challenging me again? Probably somewhere. What is the best game time for beginners? Yeah, 10 minutes is probably a minimum. Um, also, I'd recommend some increments, like 10 plus 5 or 15 plus 10. Like if you're playing on Lee Chess, I mean, chess.com also has a quick start games, but probably either this one or this one would be the two recommendations. Because anything quicker than just more games are going to come down to time, and especially when you're first starting out, it's important to get it to basically get a feel of thinking through things on your own. Even daily chess, like correspondence chess, um, which you can also do on only chess and chess.com, is a, a good thing for beginners. Um, yeah, lo like longer time controls, like 30 minutes, are also fine. Sometimes it's just harder to find games. Um, can also take a while. Like if you play a 30 minute game, uh, then it takes an hour to finish one game. But then, then it's going to be a lot higher quality than any sort of like blitzer rapid game. Okay, so white sacked. Sacked a little bit. I still want to do this move, but it doesn't work. And in the meantime, White's actually threatening to... Oh, to not trap the bishop. Wait a minute. What is this position? Let's start with this. Keeping an eye on the pawn. Making sure there's no knight of seven. So if takes takes a5, I have this move. Because the pawn's pinned. Also, thanks for subbing. LOL, Paul. Yeah, so... The, the pin is saving my bishop. White oh, has a lot of... Pawns. Oh, he has seven pawns. Okay, I have five pawns. This pawn really wants to... Be more relevant. If I could, it would be better for me just to take the pawn off the board than have the open H file. There might be some plan, like at some point bishop here and then takes and then something something. There's also some plan of just winning on time. Oh, rating to 2600 challenge. I got close earlier. I got close in bullet. Got the rating to, I think, high 2500s. Debating what to do. Probably, yeah, probably b5. Like, in general, if you have <coughs> a single bishop left, it's better to put the pawns on light squares. So then the pawns control light squares, the bishop controls dark squares. You optimize square control. Okay, now white's actually threatening to take the pawn. So it's a question, do I want the bishop here or here? Neither square actually looks appealing. If I move here, it's just stuck. If I move here, there's e5. Oh, but there's this move. Wait, counterplay. Let's go for counterplay. I made a yeah, I made a kind of thought process mistake. I was looking at like defensive moves before considering forcing moves. This is just a maiden one threat. Which white defends Oh my time. Uh this is confusing. Let's take that. This is all about getting the queen away from defending f3. Which isn't so easy. Hmm. 
Hmm. What's going on? I, mean, I, I literally have all of my pieces. But I'm scared of queen b7, so I'll play this move. Anytime I could trade queens. That's a free queen. It was not an easy position to play for white. I was actually thinking there's a cool line. Uh, instead of bishop b6, I can take on f2. I'll allow this, and then just run with a king. It looked really risky though. I might be losing the bishop. Anyway, good game. PH. So PH like played one of the best lines. So th this is an example of how, like, even if white knows up until this point, there's still some tricks. I, I still, <laughs> I still went for this idea. Um, it was actually kind of funny, because king f1 might be objectively better than castling. Because castling walks into this idea. King f1... Yeah, king f1 is better than castling. <laughs> so... That's a time where like it, it makes sense to give the opponent a take back. So they play a slightly worse move. 